Hey, uh, Christian, Mike Catalano in Rochester. Um, you know, there's a difference between feeling like you can prove that you belong on the team and make the regular roster or be on the practice squad and getting a chance. This offseason didn't work in your favor. No offseason sessions, no preseason games. Do you feel like you still have a legitimate shot to prove that you belong? Um, yeah, I, I believe I do. Just the way that the Bills, um, the whole organization, how everything is set up. Um, coach really believes in choosing the best players um, to be a part of the team, um, to be in the squad. Um, so I feel as though if I prove myself in practice, when he's given us lots of opportunities to kind of put our best foot forward, um, that we'll have the, the chance to really make the team. All right, thank you. You have more questions or? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I did. Sorry, but good, good afternoon, Christian. George Radney from Challenger Community Newspaper. Uh, Hi. Uh, good, good, good to see you again. I'm just wondering, uh, during the season last year, with being with the team, were you able to get any physical contact with pads during the, uh, with other practice squad players to, to keep yourself uh, with some type of uh, continuity of the hitting aspect of the game? Oh, yeah, but, well, obviously, from playing rugby, I'm used to getting hit, so, you know, <laughs> without pads. But to answer your question, um, we have, I uh, believe it's Wednesdays, where we go, like, full full pads, like, be, um, we're, we play, like, live. Um, we obviously, we try to protect each other, make sure that we're not trying to injure our other teammates and stuff, but we have the opportunity to wear pads um, pretty much every week before we play a game, so... Um, your, to answer your question, yeah, um, I get enough physical contact um, to kind of stay ready if there was ever a call up last season. Excellent. And how about the speed of the game? Have you? Uh, I know you're fast. I know you showed that in that preseason game uh, when you just took off and was was gone on that touchdown run. Uh, are you feel comfortable with the speed of the uh, NFL game? Yeah, I think obviously from my first taste of the of. I guess a real football game last year. Um, the intensity that we train at um, at the Bills, when we had when, once we had got to the games, I actually felt a lot more relaxed. Whereas in practice, I would feel nervous and like a bit like oh, what's going on and stuff. Um, but when we got to the games, I definitely felt a lot more relaxed and comfortable. Um, obviously, the the playbook gets narrowed down with more game planning for whoever the opponent is. Um, so. I definitely felt a lot more comfortable. Um, but coming into year two, the game slowed down even more for me. Um, just being able to realize what I'm supposed to do on the field and how my role um, affects the next person's role and how their role affects mine. So I think just the more time uh, being around the game, studying film, the game is uh, starting to slow down uh, in terms of my understanding and being able to react quicker than I did when I first came in. Oh, excellent. Last question for you. Without any preseason games, you just have to show your skills uh, in, uh, during practice and during live sessions. Uh, yeah. uh, I know Coach yesterday said there will be live sessions. You will be going live uh, at yeah. certain times yeah. throughout the uh, training camp. And that includes uh, pass blocking. And do you feel yeah. comfortable with the pass blocking and things of that nature? Yeah, so for me, it's, that's obviously something that's very new to me. Uh, we don't. And back in rugby, we don't have, like, if you were to block a player, that's illegal, so you'd be getting uh, sanctioned on the field. But um, obviously, through being able to be around the game the whole of last year, um, having a lot of practice, one-on-one uh, -on -one stuff with my coach, Kelly Skipper, um, and even being on the look team throughout the season as well, servicing the defence, um, I was able to kind of get the technique down and something I'm still working on. But, um, yeah, definitely a lot more comfortable with um, pass pro and, and blocking. Beautiful. Hey, thank you for your time. Thank you for your time and good luck this. Uh, hopefully, you'll be able to make the squad this season. The yes, active thanks. roster. Thanks, George. Appreciate it. Hey, Christian. Good to see you. Uh, now that the pads are on, Zach Moss had a couple nice runs today. What has impressed you about him? And have you been able to learn anything from him, even though he's a rookie? Yeah, like. Um, so me and Zach actually are pretty tight. Um, obviously, I'm still classed as a rookie, so we were doing our virtual meetings 
throughout the spring together, along with um, Antonio Williams, who was previously here too. Um, so we, we've already kind of built up a rapport and a, a relationship. And um, he's already been helping me with my game and stuff. And I'm, I'm, I've been really impressed with like the way that he's come in and obviously take, took a handle on the playbook and is already out there, like you said, making some good good runs, making people miss. And um, just really like looking forward to when the games actually start. Thanks, Christian. Appreciate it. Thank you. Maddie? Hey, Christian. This is Rich Donnelly out in Rochester. Um, from, doing, Rich? Hey, Christian. From all the reports that we saw back in February, the virus was going through Europe really before it got to America. Um, how was your family dealing with it? Um, uh, my family, I, I think, I guess we're, we've been blessed. Like, no one in my family was affected by the, the virus. Um, obviously, everybody was quarantined for a few months. Um, but yeah, everyone everyone kind of used it as a time to really um, spend more time with the family because uh, obviously everyone's got busy schedules. My my dad obviously works a lot. My mom she works, and then my little brother is like a touring musician as well. So for for everybody really, their kind of industries slowed down, so they were at at home a lot. So they just we're just finding things around the house to do, get a bit more creative. Um, my brother started doing some tutoring and um, some production stuff. My dad was just working from home, likewise my mom. But um, yeah, obviously it was a tough period, but we had to just find a way to get through it, um, lean on each other for support. Because um, obviously I was over here during, the, well, not that you knew that, but I was actually back over here um, because there was worries about not being able to travel um, in time for the spring, like off season training. So I actually came back here. Um, so I was quarantined over here with my fiance and stuff. Um, but yeah, luckily everyone's come through unscathed and um, we're just kind of dealing with the, the aftermath now, um, just trying to push on and um, staying safe and healthy. Well, and then since you were here, uh, how much time did you put into a possible touchdown celebration for when you inevitably <laughs> score another 65-yard touchdown run this year? Um, to, I didn't really put any time into that, to be honest. Um, I never really been someone to, like, really celebrate as such. But um, I'm sure whatever the vibe is at the time, however I'm feeling, um, something, will, something will come out. <laughs> I recommend maybe like a changing of the guard Buckingham Palace style, but I think that might fit. <laughs> yeah, that would, time. that would be cool. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you, Christian. Thanks, Rich. C. Wade, Mookie Hawkins, Waffle Sports 1080. How you doing, man? What's good, bro? Hey, man, I see you working out in Cleve Hill. You know, you've been definitely yeah, working yeah. hard to uh, become a better running back. So just tell us what has been the biggest transition you had to encounter into uh, adjusting to the NFL game? Um, <laughs> off the top of my head, uh, definitely the meetings. <laughs> we have, so coming into the game, um, obviously my, my kind of mindset was also on, on um, the actual game itself, like on field stuff. And um, even the playbook, that was kind of my biggest bugbear or something that I thought was going to be like the hardest, but the playbook, essentially learning the playbook is easy. You just put the time into it. You're basically just learning um, a particular type of jargon for what the calls are we're going to use on the field. Um, but I never anticipated the amount of meetings and the length of the meetings and how long we'll be, <laughs> how long we'll be in meetings for every day, uh, mm -hmm. six days a week. So that's definitely been something tough for me because um, I'm only used to maybe an hour of meetings in total in a day, if that. Um, mm -hmm. So it's definitely increased my attention span. Um, so I can sit through anything now and concentrate the whole time. Um, but yeah, outside of the meetings, I think it will just be those kind of um, techniques around blocking, um, special team stuff, like learning how to um, do kick slides, all these kind of like really foreign, different kind of movements that I've never done before. Um, those are the things that obviously I've had to take time to really learn and uh, try to make it second nature. So when I'm out there, I don't have to 
do too much thinking. Um, and that's why last year was so tough because everything was completely new. And like mm-hmm. I said, all these different movements that my body's never, ever done before. Um, mm-hmm. And it's not like I get hundreds of reps and opportunities to be able to do it. So I really had to learn the game in my mind, really, watching film, studying my own film, watching other people, and just try to copy it when I got out on the field. We see that work you're putting in out there in Cleve Hill, man. The feet look good. The hips is opening up pretty fluid. Um, yeah. you know, just tell us a little bit of the similarities of rugby and football. Um. I think there are a lot of similarities in terms of like um, gameplay, like obviously trying to trying to play for field position with the special teams, um, even like routes to an extent. Um, you're trying to move the defenders around. You try to try to create holes or um, windows, as they call it, for the quarterback to throw into. Um, all that sort of stuff is kind of similar to rugby where we're always trying to create space or play into space um but it's just about trying to put it trying to uh, i guess see how you can translate the skills i know from rugby into to, uh, football because obviously it's very um rugby is uh very what do you call it linear and football is very uh vertical so it's it's kind of it's kind of, you know, you have to really try to figure it out as you go along. So definitely last year I was struggling to find how I can transition my skills into the sport. But this year now with a lot more understanding and having gone through a lot of the drills, I'm kind of seeing like, oh, this is like this and this is like this. So now I can use my skills here. Whereas before I was probably a bit kind of a bit slow to do certain things just because I was still figuring it out. All right, man. We wish you nothing but the best, C. Wade, and uh, good luck this year. Thank you very much, man. Hey, Christian. John Scott, good to see you. What's good, John? Good to see you. Uh, Just wanted to know how your approach to this training camp is different than your approach to last year's. Uh, My approach this year is I know what's going, what what to expect, you know? So, um, I guess I could prepare myself mentally for what's about to come because I know what's going to come. Um, whereas before it was kind of like, let me pre- prepare for like anything. <laughs> I don't know what's going to come, what's going to be like, the intensity, what it feels like to get hit, um, what what drills we're going to get and how I'm supposed to like execute the drill. Like literally everything was just a complete blank canvas. So. Now it's like, okay, I'm a bit more comfortable. I know what kind of drills we'll be doing. Or if a drill comes, I'll be, okay, I know what we're doing here, what the aim of the drill is, what we're trying to achieve, and what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to get out of it. Um, and even just in the gameplay, knowing, okay, I'm probably going to get a few reps here. Maybe this is the blitz period or this is move the ball. Just, just kind of just being more familiar. You can actually prepare yourself for what's about to come because I've been through it now. So is it fair to say maybe last year was just about not doing something wrong and figuring out the game, but you actually feel this year, unlike last year, that you can make this team? Yeah, I feel as though um, I have the potential to make the team. Um, obviously, that I've only been playing the game a year, so there's still things that I need to learn and um, some reaction stuff. I would say that I need to um, improve on. But in terms of my base knowledge now, compared to last year, where my base knowledge would have been back down here and my skill up here, now it's actually starting to rise up. So I have a good base knowledge now and I can definitely work from that going forward. But I believe I have the potential to make the team just like everybody else. Thanks, good luck. Thanks, John. Hey, Christian, Sal Capaccio, WGR Radio here. Great to see you, man. Great to, uh, great yes, to see you back on the field. Okay, hey, okay. Uh, for, first of all, I hope that Cleve Hill Field treated you well. as my high school alma mater, so I hope it was all good for you over there, okay? Yeah, and I was straight up, because I only found, about it, found out about it late. So when I did, I was like, yeah, this is, this is exactly what I need. Um, wasn't turf when I played, though. I, I'm too old. We only had grass. But anyway, hey, um, <laughs> I actually want you to take me back through the offseason a little bit, if you can, and tell us, 
what your training was like. Um, you were here. How did you train? Some guys had to find places to get gyms, you know, make makeshift stuff in their house, in their garage. Also, on top of that, you kind of learned what you needed to do as far as training for an NFL season. So what was all that like for you? So it was kind of uh, odd, and I was a bit worried about um, – how I was going to get through it because I had plans to go down to Florida and train with some people. Um, John Brown in particular, one of my teammates, um, I was looking to go and stay with him to train. Um, and even back home in England, I had planned to uh, link up with F.A. Obada, um, one of my former, well, one of my fellow Englishmen at the Panthers. And we was going to work on some like hand stuff, like, working your hands and stuff like that. So I had plans to do that stuff. That obviously got thrown out the window. So I was basically left with my on my own with like no no gym. So like no weight room to go to um and no equipment really like cones or ladders or anything. So luckily the Bills kind of um put together a package where I was able to get some uh resistant bands and a couple of weights and stuff. So I was able to work out mainly body weight stuff. Um, and then I have a field in my back back garden or behind my back garden where I could obviously do some conditioning, running, um, just use like a t-shirt or some jumpers to be able to do my cone drills and stuff. Um, and then as time went on, I found out about Cleveland Hill, was able to go down there and actually like use the markings on the field. And then the Bills sent us a, um, or we have an app, where it had all the programs, the weight room programs on there for people who had weight room stuff. And then if you didn't, like a body weight program. So I was able to follow that along with some conditioning stuff and some drills. So that's really how I stayed in shape. Um, just trying to find a way like everybody else um, until we were able to come back in the facility. Thanks, man. Glad my high school could step up and uh, be there for you. Great to see you again. Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks, Sal. Hello, Christian Malik here from the Evening Stand in London. How you doing, mate? I'm good, Giza. You all right? Not too bad, thanks. Um, <laughs> wondering whether you've been keeping up with kind of the push to get sport back on over here. Obviously, the Premiership rugby started up again, and you've been speaking to old friends and stuff about what it's been like, no fans, all those kind of measures. Yeah, I haven't actually spoken to them since, like, because obviously they only kicked, kicked back up, uh, like, this weekend. So I haven't spoken to anyone as such about the games, but... I've been in touch, obviously, throughout the um, quarantine and, like, the, I guess the, the the training period leading up to these games. Um, and the guys were the guys were pretty cool about it. They um, obviously said, I think all the teams got furloughed and stuff, so they were still able to get paid some of their contracts, which is obviously good to keep them afloat. Um, and then, obviously, once they'd gone back in, it was obviously doing regular testing training but it's all spread out a bit like we have here at the Bills um so obviously I could relate to what they've been going through um but yeah everyone's everyone seems to be cool I'm sure I'll catch up with them in the next few days or so our schedule here is uh pretty manic during training camp we go from 7 a.m to pretty much 7 p.m bro with like not many breaks so yeah by the time I get home I'm trying to eat and go to sleep and uh, seven o'clock here is midnight over there, so it's tough to keep in touch sometimes. You mentioned you're going to link up with FA there. What was what was the plan there? Where were you guys going to do that? Um, so when we usually go home, we obviously um have the uh, the contact or the the partnership with Tottenham Tottenham Hotspur. So being able to go and train at their um uh, training facility um is usually like a hot spot. And to be honest, uh, we probably wouldn't have been able to go in there with the with the virus and stuff. So we probably just found like a park or somewhere where we could have just worked worked the hands. I think there was a video that went up. You seen FA working his hands with the um, with some uh, what was it called punching gloves, boxing gloves on. So it's just all that similar stuff that we were trying to link up and do really. Because um, obviously, if we were going to be doing some races, he wouldn't be able to keep up. He's not that fast, you know. That's He's a lot, man. All right, appreciate that. Appreciate Take care. it. Hi, Christian. Gail from hey, Scott. Hey, what's going on? How are you doing? Hello, how are you? It's been a while. I know, I know. How are you doing? 
We're g- I'm good, I'm good. I'm not very good with the technology, but I'm getting there. Thanks to your nice PR man. Um, <laughs> Christian, when you decided to make this move, a lot of people thought it was kind of incredibly brave, hoped you'd have an incredible adventure over there. How much does it now feel a little bit make or break? You obviously turned heads this time last year, but this is where it's really got to be at, isn't it? This is, this is the big chance. Yeah, it is. It is really like this is my second year and stuff. And um, like you said, this it's kind of the like a, I guess make or break kind of year, um, which is kind of ironic. The fact that we're not gonna have no preseason games. Obviously, we've had this whole crazy situation with the uh, COVID nineteen and stuff. But yeah, I'm just like I've been saying before. I've just been just trying to stay on it, getting uh, the work in that I can, even whether it's on my own or with some of the other guys and stuff. And obviously now that things start to open up, I'm able to, I guess, link up with some of the other guys now, some of the young guys that have come in and just really try to um, learn as much as I can and put it into practice. It, although it's very hard to do that, like I said, I've had to try to learn the game in my mind really. And then when I do get that opportunity to go on the field, I have to take full advantage of it. So it's very tough. Uh, NFL life is very tough and I can see why, um, it's so difficult to, to like make a roster um, and even why it's so difficult to even get into to kind of this period here where to get to training camp, like people are getting cut um, all left, right and centre, um, even throughout the year. So it's a very, very cutthroat business because that's what it is at the end of the day. But um, yeah, I'm just trying to do everything I can um, to put my best foot forward every day and show what I can do. And um try to be some sort of um, addition to the team, you know, to be able to contribute something to the team. It's incredible to think that your kind of career could involve not even having a game. I mean, there's no regrets, is there, that you've decided to put yourself out there in this way? It's, as you say, it's cutthroat, especially with, without a preseason game to even be able to prove yourself. Yeah. Nah, there's no regrets whatsoever on my side, just because when I make a decision, I've already thought out, thought it out in my mind. I'm not not really someone to like make spur of the moment decisions as such, although I am very spontaneous. So it's kind of like, you know, but yeah, when it's like big decisions, um, if I've made a decision, it's something that I've thought about and kind of already processed in my mind. Um, so yeah, there's definitely no regrets. Um, the whole reason for me coming over here was just an opportunity that presented itself. Um, I wanted to test myself against the best athletes in the world and also um, just put myself in a situation where I was uncomfortable or I knew I was going to be uncomfortable, which is obviously going to make me grow as as a man and as an athlete as well. Um, And whatever comes of that, um, I guess, is what's what's meant to be. And I'll be able to, you know, at the age I am now, starting to get towards the end of my career, be able to, like, give back, which has always always been my thing anyway. So... um, yeah, I'm very blessed to be here and um, I'm, I'm relishing every opportunity that I get. And just finally for me, I heard you actually on the podcast with Ugo. You went yeah. and did the special and I, I thought, I mean, it was incredibly moving the way that you all spoke. Um, in sport over here, we've seen lots of different ways that Black Lives Matter has been marked. What are you going to do privately, publicly? What sort of discussions have we had over there? It's kind of interesting to hear from an American sportsman's point of view yep. rather than the discussions that we've had, you know, via Ugo and, and via kind of Maro over here who have been really kind of so eloquent and, and have used their platform incredibly. Yeah, so I'm, I'm someone, like, obviously there's different people, how they've been doing stuff, like being vocal on, like, social media and all that sort of stuff. but. For me, really, it's um, it's about trying to um, educate myself first of all to know exactly what happened before and know all that stuff inside out, so that I can help to educate the younger ones coming through, um, educate anyone else who's around me, so I can influence them in a way that they think um, from obviously this point going forward. Um, and there are some stuff that I'm working on in the background that's going to help. Um, in the future, but they're all long-term plans. um, That's just gonna hopefully change the way that um, people view the world and how they view other people too.